After snatching the sea dragon's mystical weapon, outsmarting the Lords of Death, and securing immortality for his followers, Sun Wukong had truly earned his title as the Monkey King. But while his disciples loved their roguish leader, his misadventures had spread chaos throughout the land. The Jade Emperor, watching from his throne in heaven, decided he would no longer stand by as this monkey wreaked havoc across his domain. After consulting with his aide, the Emperor decided the best way to maintain order was to keep a close eye on Sun Wukong. So he invited the Monkey King to serve as supervisor of the Imperial Stables. Sun Wukong jumped at what he thought was a prestigious job in heaven. He began working diligently to care for heaven's horses, and for a time, the Emperor's plan appeared to be working. But eventually, Sun Wukong realized his job was the lowest rank imaginable. Deeply offended, he whipped out his shape-shifting staff and transformed it into an iron cudgel. Blasting his way back to Earth, he erected a great banner, proclaiming the job title he felt entitled to. Furious, the Emperor dispatched his heavenly troops to bring the Monkey King back under control. But even his army's shape-shifting general was no match for Sun Wukong. Using his guile, the Monkey King bested his opponents, and the Jade Emperor was forced to offer him the post he desired. He reinstated Sun Wukong in heaven, this time in an opulent mansion. From his new home, the Monkey King threw himself into a life of leisure, exploring the realms and socializing with various deities, but the Jade Emperor was still concerned about his guest's chaotic nature. To keep him busy, he asked Sun Wukong to protect the sacred garden of immortal peaches. At this task, the Monkey King failed spectacularly. But gorging on fruit did keep him occupied, until he spotted fairies collecting the peaches for a grand festival. Despite his official role, Sun Wukong hadn't been invited to the celebration, and he quickly hatched a plan to get his revenge. Transforming a few of his hairs into sleep-inducing insects, the Monkey King incapacitated the Emperor's servants and consumed the entire feast himself. Bloated with food and wine, Sun Wukong stumbled towards his mansion, but in his drunken stupor, he ended up at the palace of the Taoist leader, Lao Tzu. Sun Wukong giddily explored Lao Tzu's deserted home, and in the alchemical room, he found a particularly tempting treasure. Five gourds filled with golden elixir. Sensing the medicine was sacred, he vowed only to sneak a taste, but soon he was surrounded by empty vessels. The elixir instantly sobered him up, and suddenly Sun Wukong knew he'd gone too far. To avoid Lao Tzu's legendary wrath, he caught the nearest cloud back to Earth. But it didn't take long for the Emperor to uncover his trail of chaos. Vowing to subdue Sun Wukong once and for all, he called on his nephew, Erlang Shen. Erlang Shen was known throughout the realms for his heroic feats and ability to see through any illusion. He and Sun Wukong began a great battle, transforming into all manner of beasts in their attempts to best one another. The fight was fearsome, but Sun Wukong's quick wits kept him one step ahead, until Lao Tzu's bracelet struck him from the heavens. This stumble was all Erlang Shen needed to capture the Monkey King and deliver him to Lao Tzu. The religious leader imprisoned Sun Wukong in a white-hot brazier, cooking him for 49 days. But when Lao Tzu opened the lid, a pair of burning eyes stared back at him. The golden elixir had made Sun Wukong's body indestructible, and he rose from the pot stronger than ever. At this terrifying triumph, the Jade Emperor despaired. He tried tricking, appeasing, and battling Sun Wukong, but it had only led to more chaos. It seemed that only the greatest power in the world could defeat the Monkey King. It was time for Buddha himself to intervene.
Heaven wasn't the only realm where the Monkey King wreaked havoc. Follow the legendary troublemaker's desperate bid to escape the underworld with this video.